We've got a crash in Hollywood involving a very expensive car. Let's get more from Chris Christie and Air 7 HD. Chris. Another violent crash mark, this one on the Hollywood Walk of Fame along Hollywood Boulevard at Schrader Boulevard, a three-car crash, sending that exotic Aston Martin Vantage GT straight into the Hustler Adult Store there on the corner at Schrader. You can see accident investigators already out here waiting for the wreckers to pull these cars out and hopefully to reopen Hollywood Boulevard. But you can see a major crash here with only minor injuries, fortunately. Reporting live from Air 7 HD, I'm Chris Christie, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Buying a wrecked supercar, what was I thinking? Anything this crazy has to go on YouTube. I know, everybody thinks I'm crazy, and I am. Structurally though, this car is sound. And if you are familiar with how these are built, it's not bad. I'll just keep telling myself that. Um, these cars actually completely bolt together. The only thing I'm gonna have issue with is doing the quarter panels. Uh, that'll be a learning experience for us, but we've got an aluminum welder and the frame is good, so we don't have to worry about that. The inside of the car, um, despite the airbags being deployed, the inside of the car is in very good shape. I'll get it washed up here in a little bit and take some more pictures of it. Whatever it was above it on the trailer leaked oil all over it. But just keep telling myself it's not that bad. I'm standing next to probably what is the most beat up and wrecked Aston Martin that anybody I know would be crazy enough to build. You may walk around this car and see everything is broken. You may see every panel has damage to it. Frame damage up front. Ooh, the headlight's still good. All the way around, everything is bad. The wheel is broken in half right there. I don't even know where the rest of the wheel went. Everything is beat up, every part. Maybe I'm confident, maybe I'm crazy. I don't know, but we're gonna build it. We're gonna tear this car down to nothing and we are gonna bring it back to life. All right, project update. I was going to order about fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars worth of parts for this car last night. I called, put in my parts request. A Scuderia got back to me this morning because when you call Aston Martin, they act like they're doing you a favor just talking to you. They don't sell, or Aston Martin will not sell structural or crash components to anyone that is not a certified Aston Martin repair facility. So what does that mean? That means a lot. Um, I can't get the firewall components. And, and if you knew what this was supposed to look like, it's supposed to be out to about here. I can't get any of these floor pans. I can't get any of the structure. And I think they don't want someone like me owning a car like this. They want it to be exclusive. They want it to be a rich guy only club. Well, guess what? Uh, as usual, when the British try to with an American, the American came out on top because I got online and in Michigan I found a 100% scratch-free, dent-free shell. Basically, not a rolling chassis, just the body, which is the roof and the quarters and the floors and the frame and the firewall. And, oh, and it has a new tailgate and a windshield. I found that for $8,500 with paperwork. Not a scratch on it. So, will I have to buy some more front-end components? Yes, but for the most part, we're gonna swap over everything that's good on this car to the other shell using the VIN number off of the 2015 here. I will have my Aston Martin. I'm not gonna let some part snob stop me. That car on the front on the pallet is my replacement Aston Martin body. What could possibly go wrong here? So what they're gonna do is they're going to back the truck up a little bit, pull it in at an angle, and then sharply steer the cab out towards the street. And what that's gonna do is jackknife the trailer and expose the front of, or the rear of the pallet so that we can put the fork straight in on it, lift it straight off without risking ruining the body.
that's how they loaded it. I don't need two wrecked Aston Martins, so I hope this goes better than I'm feeling it will. Well, that looks like it ought to work. Beautifully done. Yeah, I'll find you a spot. Okay. Boy, this is just a shell. Well, today did not go as planned. What I wanted to do was have the transmission out of the rear end and torque tube out of the car. Things went a little differently than we anticipated. We were able to strip the rear subframe, get all the suspension and brakes and brake lines and everything disconnected. We realized that there's a bar on the subframe that goes over the top of the transmission. So after doing some looking and digging, we couldn't find anything on the internet. I could only find one YouTube video where somebody was removing a engine. And even what they had to do was separate the lower subframe, put jack stands underneath it, and then raise the body off, which is what we're going to have to do. Um, and I'm okay with doing that, but the issue is, once we do that, we still have to move this body, bring the other body in, and swap parts over. And as you can see by the interior, we're not done with this one yet. So what I'm going to do is buy two wagons like I have the body on, and then we'll set this car down on it, and we'll just drop, this, drop the front and rear subframe right onto the wagons, lift, finish stripping this body, mm -hmm. then bring the other body in, and just set it right on top of it. Um, that's going to be the easier way to go. And this is not, you can't lift it and move it around. That just sucks. We tried. So didn't go as planned, but made a ton of progress. And we'll start swapping over, going from front to back on this to get everything moved over to the other car, suspension-wise and rear differential-wise. And then we will just send a rolling chassis to the body shop. We won't send it on the wagon like I planned. So that's where we're at. And I'm looking forward to just keep plugging along on this. So today was a big day for Antonio and I to separate the powertrain and the subframes from the body. Um, I think we've only got about combined we've got probably 15 to 20 hours in this looking at this compared to the other body and everything we have to do this really is not turning out to be a bad project i mean yeah the parts costs are atrocious i mean they really are but the value of this car versus what we're doing is is well worth it um, this huge monster power plant here i mean this looking at the powertrain if you know anything about engines when they come stock with headers like that you know it's serious this this is just a street legal race car is all it is. I mean, the floor is so crumpled that when we were trying to pull the torque tube out or raise the body off, it was actually stuck here uh, on the inside of this floor pan because it shoved so far over. You can kind of see it here if you know what you're looking at. That gap is just smushed and the firewall, I mean, you can't even, you really have to just see it to appreciate the, the magnitude of the damage that was done. But this is exciting. This is a big day for us and a huge turning point. Well, I'm not working as long today as I had hoped. We made huge, huge progress. We learned the hard way about moving the engine and transmission out of the way that it wasn't as easy as we thought, and we almost came really close to dropping the engine. But luckily, we're, we're engineers here, so we, we made it work. More like Imagineers, I think. This main structure here, this is the main subframe for the front, or main frame for the front that bolts on to the new chassis. That was a huge process. This is a, a big step in getting this out. Um, this is almost exactly the halfway mark. Now the other car was bent this bad, so what we'll have to do is get my Porta Power out and push this back to get it to line up. Otherwise I gotta spend like 10 grand on a new one and despite what some people think, I'm not gonna do that. And you can really tell now how bad this car was hurt. I mean, it's just, it gets worse every time we take a part off of it. This is where that subframe I was just showing you bolts up to. On this side, when we took the bolts out, it literally just fell off the car. So all we've got left on this one, underneath wise, is to get the fuel tank out and the rear wiring harness. That's all that has to come off the back here. Oh, and the rear bumper and the rear bumper reinforcement. Aside from that, we're just interior is all we've got left to do. And then on this car, my dashboard was broken, so I had to buy a separate dashboard for this car. So we've got to install this. But luckily, they left all of the interior wiring in this car, so that's gonna save us Plenty of man hours putting this thing together. Um, I've already checked the harnesses are all the same. These cars were pretty much the same from 2007 to 2019, with the exception being cosmetics. So things like this, where the harness is in the door here, that makes a huge difference. But we are making quick, quick progress. If I could just spend a little more time on it, we'd have this car done in no time. Well, we're getting down to the final bits to come out of this car. Really, 
all that's left is just this interior harness and then from the trunk and, and we're done with the shell. I've been talking about this car having a hole punched in the firewall. I don't think I realized when I bought this car how big of a hole that is. Like, you should have like three basketballs in there. And then this panel here, that should be flat to the floorboard. That's like a knot. <laughs> it's, this is crazy. What the f was I thinking? And I'm glad my wife loves me enough to not throw me out of the house for buying this car and having enough faith in me to have the right guys to get this car put together. Big hole, big gaping hole. Well, today's work on the Aston is uh, really boring to watch and tedious. This is the old body wiring harness out of the red Aston. This is the engine harness out of the red Aston. Reinstalling the body harness. So it's nothing but butt cracks and BO in here. Right. One issue we're having is on the tailgate because they had different wiring harnesses and it's actually ran through the frame with the glass laid over top. We've tried a number of things to get it out, but that's not happening. So we're gonna have to have a glass person come out, pop the rear window and the front window as well because I gotta change the VIN tag, which is perfectly legal. I don't wanna get any shit from anybody in Idaho. But once we do that, we'll have it reinstalled and hopefully it don't break the glass because glass is not cheap. I know people look at this and think I'm crazy and think that there's no way this thing's ever gonna get done, but seriously, it's it's going quickly. So when we do come back and get back working on it again in a few weeks, we're gonna have the powertrain back in and then from there, it won't take much. It'll just fly right through. All right, so something that was really excited to happen this weekend that, man, I lost sleep over, waiting to come in and see this this morning. I wasn't able to make it in this weekend. Steve and Antonio worked on the Aston and they put the powertrain into the new body and I couldn't be more happy than to see this when I come in. I, by no means, should be able to own this vehicle, but by fluke and skill, I was able to. It's gonna be huge for our shop and our business once this car is done and sells. It's just such an amazing, amazing machine. Well, this has been, a, I don't wanna call it more work. This has just been a different type of experience for us. We've never worked on a supercar before. And this is a supercar. Granted, it's not a Lambo or a Ferrari, but it's pretty damn close. I'm just so, so excited to be where we're at on this. I don't even know what to say. This is Obviously, the front end's just rough fit right now. It's not attached or bolted in or anything, but just the sexiness of the, the lines on this car. So, so amazing. I mean, look at these wheel arches, how much they flex out and flare out. Still obviously a ways to go, but you get the vibe now. We are ready for paint. It is there. Uh, we have a couple loose ends to, to tighten up, but not a big deal. Some things that aren't quite hooked up that need to be zip tied under the car to go on the tow truck and be rolled. But it's there. It, this is ready to go to paint and be painted. Absolutely cannot wait. I am so, so, so excited. And I just know that once there's color on this car and everybody sees it as it should be seen, you won't think I'm so crazy. drive this car here we're gonna do a shakedown run and we're gonna be listening for noises or squeaks or anything no, no, I'm, I'm not nervous. what we set out to do. Don't care that we're $80,000 over budget. And I'm not rich. I am not rich. I am a blue collar business owner, middle class person, and it was a real struggle to do this, but it was worth it. It was worth every penny and every minute of it.